All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our latest BCBA practice exam, where we're going to do the next set of questions together and breaking them down. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. Be sure to check out BehavioranalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. As always, when you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. 149. Gracie is standing around waiting for lunch. She cannot see the food, but she smells what is being prepared, and she says they must be frying chicken today. What verbal operant is represented by Gracie's behavior? Four verbal operant questions. There are a few key things we must know. One, what is evoking the behavior? Two, what is reinforcing the behavior? And then point-to-point -point correspondence and form a similarity if necessary. Now, let's start with what evoked Gracie's behavior. She is standing around waiting for lunch. She smells what is being prepared. And then she says, well, they must be frying chicken today. So the smell of the chicken evoked Gracie's behavior. Now, would you consider smell a nonverbal stimulus? Well, of course. And so since a nonverbal stimulus evoked Gracie's behavior, there's really only two options, either a manned or attacked, because an echoic is evoked by a verbal stimulus, as is an intraverbal. Both of those are evoked by verbal stimuli. We have to eliminate those. So now we have to ask ourselves, okay, are we requesting something, as in a manned, or are we labeling something, as in something in the environment? Well, Gracie doesn't request the chicken. She simply says, they must be frying chicken today. She's labeling her smell or the smell that she smelled in the air. So Gracie is tacting the smell of the chicken. Understand the difference. A man is evoked by an MO and it's a request. Gracie's not making a request here. We're not sure if chicken is what she wants. All we know is she's waiting for lunch, but she is labeling what she smelled and it was evoked by a nonverbal SD, making this attacked. Understand that's the process you have to go through for verbal operants. What's evoking? What's reinforcing? And then you can start to ask yourself, okay, are we manding? Are we making a request? Are we echoing something? Are we labeling? What are we actually doing? 150, I know that if I go to my local coffee shop that I can order and receive my coffee in under five minutes or less. However, sometimes I must go to Starbucks instead, which can take as long as 15 minutes to order and receive my coffee. What type of reinforcement schedule does this most resemble? We're looking at a reinforcement schedule question. For the test, you of course need to know basic schedules because those basic schedules make up our compound schedules, which are more complex, of course. So a compound schedule or two or more basic schedules operating as one schedule. In this case, we know that if I go to my local coffee shop, I can order in my coffee and receive it in under five minutes or less. So essentially, we've got some sort of VI5 for ordering and receiving coffees, so variable interval five. But if I go to Starbucks instead, it can take as long as 15 minutes to order and receive my coffee. So we've got this one behavior, ordering and receiving coffee. One place, it's a VI5, give or take. The other place is a VI15, give or take, because it is long as or in under, so it's an average, but it's going to be less than. And so we've got these two different schedules operating under the control of SDs, right, because we know what coffee shop will serve what schedule, and they're operating independent of each other for this behavior, and the order is random. It just depends on what coffee shop you go to. So when we put all those together, what reinforcement schedule does this most resemble? Now, A, a variable interval schedule. So be careful with this. We've got two schedules operating here, two variable interval schedules. That makes it a compound schedule. So you've got to pick the best answer. And yes, the compound schedule is made up of VIs, but it is a compound schedule. So we need a compound schedule answer. So now we have a mixed schedule or a multiple schedule. And what's the difference? Well, the only difference between a multiple and a mixed is a multiple schedule has SDs while a mixed 
doesn't, meaning there's an SD that signals what schedule is available for the multiple schedule. In this case, the coffee shop is signaling either the five minutes is available or the 15. So this is going to be a multiple schedule. Now read all of your answer choices. Alternative schedule means we have a ratio schedule and an interval schedule, and we can do either or to get enforcement. Of course, that isn't what's occurring here, so we can X that out. What we have here is a multiple schedule. We have SDs signaling what schedules are available. These are occurring independently in a random order for this behavior. 151, when Liam is hungry, he will often cook dinner for himself. Tonight, however, Liam started to get hungry and decided he would order takeout from his favorite restaurant. What is Liam demonstrating? We're looking at Liam's behavior. And what is Liam demonstrating? Well, let's take a look. Liam is hungry. He cooks. Okay, start to simplify this. When Liam is hungry, he will cook dinner. Tonight, however, Liam is hungry. So he decided he would order takeout from his favorite restaurant. Start getting good at identifying the important items that quickly. Simplify this stuff. So when Liam is hungry, stimuli, the antecedent, he will cook dinner. Tonight, Liam is hungry, he orders takeout. So we've got the same stimulus with multiple responses. What do we call that? Well, A, response generalization. Response gener generalization occurs when you've got a stimulus and multiple responses are occurring in the presence or can occur. So when Liam is hungry, he can cook or he can order takeout. With stimulus generalization, we've got a single response occurring in the presence of multiple stimuli. So you have to ask yourself for response to stimulus generalization, how many responses do I have? Here we have two or more, which is likely response generalization. Why is it not maintenance? Well, for it to be maintenance, there has to be something in the question that talks about teaching. Because remember, maintenance is when behavior that is taught persists or continues even once teaching stops. And so we're not talking about teaching here. We're not talking about stopping teaching. We can't say it's maintenance. We don't know how Liam acquired these skills. We just know he as the skills. So what Liam is demonstrating is A, response generalization. 152, which of the following answer choices is not an example of an automatic consequence? All right, so let's read carefully. Yes, we're looking for an automatic consequence, but the question is saying not an example. So when you get a not question, it means essentially that three of the answer choices are an example. Only one is not. So let's find the examples of automatic consequences. And an automatic consequence just means there's no other person involved. It's not socially mediated. So A, Tyrone is sitting in a busy waiting room at the dentist office and starts to get hot. So he takes off his jacket and sets it down next to him. Is that an automatic consequence? Yes, because no one is taking Tyrone's jacket off for him. Tyrone didn't ask anybody to change the temperature. Tyrone just delivered the consequence. He self-delivered the consequence, essentially. He was hot. He took off his jacket. A is an example. B, Brenda eats all her son's candy from trick-or-treating after he goes to bed. Is Brenda eating her son's candy automatic? It is. Yes, earlier, the son might have collected the candy, but Brenda eating the candy is not socially mediated. She's just providing that consequence for herself. That is an example. C. Lucas falls off his scooter and chips a tooth, so he looks up the number to a dentist office. So Lucas fell off the scooter. Does Lucas looking up a number to a dentist office, is that socially mediated? Well, no. He's just doing that on his own. Once he talks to somebody, that'll make it socially mediated. He's not there yet. D. Lucy is too short to grab a jar off the top shelf, so the manager reaches up and grabs it for her. Very clearly socially mediated. Why? Well, the manager is the second person involved. He's helping Lucy. He's administering the consequence. This is not an example of an automatic consequence. So when you get a not question, you can either find the three that are and then eliminate those, or you can find the one that's not. It's two different approaches. 153, you set out to increase a client's functional communication. Set the mastery criteria at 85% across three trials. 
based on the following data, what were the trials to a criterion? So we're looking at a measurement question, specifically trials to criterion. With trials to criterion, it's exactly what it sounds like. How many trials did it take to reach the mastery criterion? So let's figure out what's the mastery criterion. Well, it's set at 85% across three trials. So be careful here, because a lot of people read 85% across three trials and just assume it has to be consecutive. It doesn't say consecutive. It just says 85% across three trials, meaning we just need three trials at 85% to hit mastery. So let's look at the following data. We're looking for three trials in a row. At, or Excuse me. See, I made the same mistake. We've got to be careful. We're looking for three trials just overall across all your trials at 85%. That's why we've got to read carefully and slow down. So one, we have 85%. So we're, we've got one trial. Then 80%, 75%, 82%. And then 85, 85, giving us three total trials at 85%. So we've hit mastery here. How many trials did it take? Well, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Based on the data, the trials to criterion were six trials. Not a difficult question, but you can see even I fell into the habit of thinking, well, it's got to be consecutive. It, it doesn't. It's based on what the question is asking you. Read the question carefully. Easy question, but also easy to mess it up. 154. Every time you eat ice cream, you get a terrible headache shortly after you're finished. You'll then stop eating ice cream for a few weeks, but eventually you always buy another pint of ice cream to eat, even though it will still give you headaches. What is the likely explanation for this behavior? Interesting. So we're looking at a certain behavior here, and Let's break down the scenario to figure out what that behavior is and what's the explanation. So we know you eat ice cream, you get a headache after you're finished. What happens? You stop eating ice cream for a few weeks. That headache punishes your behavior. Why is it punishment? Because your behavior decreased. But eventually, you always buy another pint of ice cream to eat, even though it still gives you headaches. So no matter what, even though you've been punished, you go back to buying ice cream. Why is that? Well, did we teach a replacement here? Apparently not. All we know is you eat ice cream, you get a terrible headache, you stop eating ice cream for a few weeks, but eventually you go back and you continue buying ice cream. Why is that? Why would you do that even though you were punished? A, you're being negatively reinforced for eating the ice cream. Well, there's no indication here. It could be but there's no indication here of you being negatively reinforced. The only information we have is you being punished. So what about B? You're being negatively punished for eating ice cream. Well, that's not true either because you're getting a headache. The headache's being added as a consequence. So if anything, you're being positively punishment, punished. What about C? You are resisting punishment. Well, no, because you were punished. For a few weeks, your behavior decreased to nothing. Punishment was effective. Problem is D. Punishment is not permanent, which is why you have to teach your replacement behavior in place of whatever you're decreasing. We've decreased the eating the ice cream, but nothing was replaced. So we just went back to eating our ice cream, even though it still gave us headaches. The likely explanation for this behavior is punishment is not permanent. And then 155, there are negatives to every consequence. Which of the following would not be considered a potential negative or downside? of punishment of a learner. So we're looking again at punishment of a learner because there are negatives or side effects to all consequences. Which of the following would not be considered a potential negative? Another not question, meaning three of these are a negative or downside of punishment. This is a good set of questions to test. Are you reading carefully? Are you reading slowly? Slow is quick and quick is fast. All right. The slower you go, the quicker you're going to get, and the quicker you get, the faster you're going to go. You can't force yourself to go fast. Slow down at first. So what is not considered a negative or downside? A, the learner exhibits counter control. Well, if counter control occurred as a result of punishment, that would be a downside. So A is out. B, the learner's behavior is reduced. Well, if we punished, 
and the behavior was reduced, that would be a success. That is not a negative. What about C? We always read all of our answer choices. The punishment procedure requires additional resources. That would be a downside. Punishment can, can take more time. It can take more resources. It can be have ethical issues. C is not. It, C is a negative or downside. And then D, the learner begins avoiding technicians. If that technician becomes an SD for punishment, we might start getting avoidance behavior. That is a negative or downside. We're looking for the one that is not a negative or downside, that's going to be B, because B would mean we were successful. The learner's behavior was successfully reduced. All right, thank you for watching. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. Make sure you subscribe, work hard, study hard. See you soon.